you are still watching ways now the international day of the african child has been celebrated on june 16th every year since 1991 when it was first initiated by the organization of african unity it honors those who participated in the soweto uprising in 1976 on that day it also raises awareness of the continuing need of, for improvement of the education provided to African children. Um, very, very important day. Honestly speaking, I don't know where would have we would have been if uh, we've not had, you know, proper quality education. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so sometimes when I see a lot of children, especially with the numbers of gro um, children um, out of school, growing by the minute, it just breaks my heart, right? I think I said the last count it was about 10 million children were out of school. I don't know what the current statistics is now for out of school children. So I mean, every day that celebrates you know the education of the child, the African child, is a day to you know to hold there because with that comes a lot of things. There's a there's a ripple effect if the mind is well educated, right? A lot of things that we face in Africa would not really be there because again. Uh, there are some things that are associated with illiteracy. There are some things that are associated with ignorance. So imagine if we start to educate, you know, the minds of our children properly and, you know, we clean the generation with, so every year, the educational standards is going higher and higher. And you just see, you know, what do you think will happen in another decade? You start having well-educated African citizens which will mean a lot in terms of development and everything for the african um, um for the for the african continent as a whole yeah i mean <laughs> you're 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 totally right education um the importance of education cannot be overemphasized and i, I recently there is the loan something but that's for like um mm. i think is it just for university or yeah. entirely yeah because technically secondary school i think primary school all the way to secondary school is supposed to be free education oh so the, the student loan is meant to be for for university oh ideally <laughs> we're not supposed to be paying for well know. it's an important day it's an important <laughs> day i think <laughs> we are beginning oh. to let's see how it goes with all these things coming up mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. What did we find in the news? So you take your first news. We have like four news stories. So we're, we're, we're taking it one for the team. <laughs> so you take your first news. I'll take mine. Then we, we'll come back again and circle around. Okay. Um, mine is about Tinubu and, you know, the conversation about merging some of the arms of government. That's FIRS, Custom, Nimasa. So it reads... President Bola Ahmed Tinubu Policy Advisory Council has recommended the declaration of a state of emergency on revenue generation in the country. The council also proposed the merger of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Nigerian Customs Service, and the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency into the Nigerian Revenue Service in order to enable an efficient collation of all direct and indirect taxes as well as levies on behalf of the federal government. According to submissions made by the National Economic Subcommittee, the policy will be, aid, will be aided by the passage of an emergency economic reform bill, which will grant the president special powers to drive the economic reform agenda and support the delivery of sustainable and inclusive economic growth. I think I was just saying that there's been, is it up to three weeks, there's been a lot of new updates on different things going on. Um, I have, I'm sort of really eager to see how all of this will play out. But then again, as much as I think this is a good step, like consolidating all of these arms, but then I think there are some differences, like they have their specialty. I'm just trying to imagine how it's going to be like bringing all these components together to work as one. But then I understand the aspect of, you know, um, the aspect of all the wastages and all of people embezzlement and some of the things that goes on in some of these agencies. I think also, it's also going to probably aid the collation of data because sometimes when you go to these different agencies, a single company can have different information in all these agencies. So I, I just really want to see how this is going to play out if it's um, eventually they are going to implement this 
um, eventually is just still a work in progress. They're just still talking about it. Custom, Nimasa, that's the maritime. It yes, is, is yes. FRS. FRS. It's the FRS in the mix of those ones now that I don't understand. But, you know, may, would this possibly address multiple taxations and all those issues that comes to businesses and all of that? So um, since we're having a, a um, one, cost, one, yes. Yes, one team, so instead of you going to pay this levy, levy, levy here, we just have one bill and, you know, um, I, I don't think it might be exactly like that, mm. but one of the major advantages I'm seeing here is number one, um, the wastage, the wastage in terms of economic resources. So like, there are just too many things, and it's almost like they're doing the same thing. So it's like bringing it under one umbrella. Mm. No, there'll be that cut down of cost mm -hmm. in terms of you know, maybe operate, operating cost or so. But if you look at it, so um, FRS talks about um, collect. VAT, CIT, and also they have their different aspects of revenue which all of these but so it might not necessarily affect the sort of tax we are supposed to pay but then in terms of wastages of resources I think that's like where it's going to drive um, it home. Okay all right so I have two quick um, stories to mention then I'll come back to you for your final story which is the juicy one we'll be waiting for. So uh, first of all um, when I see stories like this, I just they laugh. Like, don't you know why the person went to visit? So it made news that Dangote visited um, the president in Abuja um, today. And I'm wondering, why is he making news? They said, well, details of the the visit is unknown. Like, the, like you know, literally, this guy just launched a, a, a refinery. refinery. And the president's conversation since he came into Talk power, to has been around the petroleum industry and, you know, it was, it was that particular sector. So when you see someone that just built a multi-billion dollar, uh, what's it called, refinery, mm -hmm. visiting somebody that is discussing issues around subsidy and petrol and all of that, what else do you expect? Well, Dangote has visited um, the president, so details remain unknown. We don't think we would but ever find that But I don't understand. Why, why would, if they are giving us this information, why don't they just tell us the reason for the visit? Right. Because it's just like raising my curiosity. Why is it? And that's I mean, the only right there. She, she, both of us are talking about So what's it. the point? Like, don't bring it out there if you're not ready to give us the full gist. Absolutely. Don't bring it out there. Absolutely. But, um, so another quick story I wanted to talk about, and this is actually in line with what we had talked about yesterday, right, about maintenance culture of um, especially when it comes to not really limited to public facilities but across board maintenance culture in nigeria is just really really poor and um, this story you know is very sad but these things happen all the time you know you tell people but i think sometimes they feel like you know they have superpowers so a man you know that was vandalizing a transformer in um, kogi state he died of electrocution so this guy is olu Oluku Luku hmm. Oluku Luku, that's his name, Kabiru, was on Thursday electrocuted while vandalizing a transformer of the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company at a substation on Camp Road in the Lokoja area of Kogi State. Now the manager of the power distribution firm, Michael Eneromi, said that the firm was contacted after the corpse was found at the substation adding that the transformer at the station had been the subject of repeated now see the word repeated vandalism right just last week we had fixed the transformer following a report um, by the community after it was vandalized so yesterday following another report of vandalism on the same transformer we sent a letter requesting about 1.9 million to fix the transformer he said now you see how I say that sometimes I don't understand whether, you know, because it doesn't just make Makes sense. sense. A lot of times our resources are spent on, you understand, fixing, fixing, something is not working, fixing. Now we see why certain things are not working. And I keep on saying that we are tired of hearing that miscreants went to pull out all the iron cables mm. on the highway. Why is nobody arresting them? You know, will I just wake up? We me or Uwa, will I just wake up and say they go to Milan? I won't go carry. I won't go carry meta. Say I won't go sell. It's not possible because I know that if I am caught, I'm going straight to jail. Yeah. So except if 
and the reason I'm even saying this because it's going to tie much later to what we're discussing around the oil theft, except if I have some kind of assurance that whatever I do, nobody will first of all disturb me. Secondly, even if I am caught, do you understand? Mm -hmm. There are people that are there waiting to get me out of the um, custody of the police and all of that. Because what will give me that liver? To say I want to go and remove even if, even if it is a small bulb that belongs to government, what will give me that, that liver? I don't understand. So that's why I'm saying that sometimes, right, these problems that we face, you know, it seems to me that the government makes it look like it's something that is unsurmountable. It is surmountable. It is something that you just put your foot down and say, you know what? If you touch it, you go to jail. And this one, nobody will bail you. No, do you understand? Yeah. Once you start to put very, very harsh and implement those, those um, um, what's it called, conditions, yeah, yeah. you will definitely find solution. But when we keep on, like, you know, you see somebody robbing you, you are, you are patting the person in the back. The person will keep on doing it. Now, look at this particular transformer. Repeated vandalism. So now, God now decided that this guy, because I think your time is up. Try. Because now you lost your life. You know? But this is now after there's a bill of 1.9 million, almost 2 million naira to fix the same transformer. But again, but again, what's up with some of us Nigerians? Why a public facility? What, like, seriously? So I'm saying to you that, Glory, you and I cannot go and vandalize any public facilities. Because we know if they catch us, we're going straight to jail. The only reason that somebody will have the guts, right, and the temerity mm -hmm. to go and vandalize a, 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 a government property is because they know that nothing is going to happen to them. And it, it's so aching because it's like some people can easily face the wrath of the law why some people are just that's it and why why is why is it so why anyways we are going to talk about <laughs> this one later we want, we want to talk something juicy <laughs> Daya glory tell me this please. so I'm hmm. in trouble today god help me today i was just on my own jelly jelly and uh -huh. i've just been seeing one sort of something flying up and down like was ah, trending. what's going on what's going on what's going on <laughs> apparently <laughs> There was a survey conducted um, for various countries on about the size of the penis. I'm sure they don't want me to spell it, but they get the message. Yeah. So, and in that survey, <laughs> some certain countries came first, second, mm -hmm. and a, another one that starts with an N <laughs> was nowhere near the first. 30 countries mentioned. I'm like, with all the boasting and everything going on in Nigeria, why did I not see Nigeria on that list? <laughs> well, let me just say for the record, hmm? I'm going to, uh, what's it called? Ecuador. You get why? I just uh, want to know. <laughs> because you know, sometimes when you, when you get some research, you need to just go and be sure that the research was... Um, you know, was properly carried mm. out, you know. So I want to visit Ecuador, Cameroon, Bolivia, Sudan, and Haiti. Just the first four countries. I just want to go and test to be sure. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering, like, what to make... I want to go and carry out... No, no, not test. I want to go and carry out analysis and research to, uh, to ascertain if this report was true. But you see, when I saw this male, male um, um, organ, you know, and the survey, you know, it then begs... Uh, or rather, it then proves why we always have issues of, what's it called, um, enhancement drugs, mm -hmm. like penis enhancement or penis the enlargement. The pressure is getting worse. The pressure is getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you then see penis enhancement um, uh, companies and all those people selling all sorts of, would I call it nonsense, in the name of, you know, trying to help the male genital organs, you know, get, rather be bigger, longer, and all of that. <laughs> I used to think Nigerian men, they were, uh, they were up to date, but hey, we thought we're so going too. to Ecuador. We thought so too. <laughs> we're going to Ecuador. I, I, I think we need, to, we need to protest freedom for, no, justice for Nigeria. I think this was not properly condemned because with all the hyping, with all the show of that, I mean, you know, they have sang songs with cassava. <laughs> they sang <laughs> sort of songs. How is that even possible? How is that possible? <laughs> Man, please let us know if this survey like represents what is actually going ah. on out there. Because but they said the the, the average um, erection size of um, penis in Niger in, for Nigerian men, I think it's about thirteen point twelve um, 
centimeter and 11.6 six centimeters or like men in general or is that so men in we, general maybe that's this really, really serious like I, I was not thinking this for people to sit down and think about doing a survey mm. like the size of this survey is really that important <laughs> it's really that important <laughs> yeah so now people have to really pay attention to the extent of so if the average survey. size of the penis is 13.58 what, what did nigeria get we try now that means we are above our Nigeria age. was no but is it 44 no but at so? least it got 14 point something centimeter. but no let's look at in terms of comparing it other is, countries so. Let's manage, let's manage what God has given to us. Just of Africa, I don't understand. God, you no guys, please help us. I don't understand what's going on. No, well, you know, with the, with the level of the rate at which men men go like jumping from one place to another, you would think that you know they are well and <laughs> God forgive me. <laughs> but hey, we did not do the survey. Oh. We did do it. Nigerian please. men, if you if you feel like this survey is not true. Uh, but I don't know really. Is it that ego thing for men about the size of the penis? I think it is. I because think. honestly speaking, I, I don't think size is equivalent to great um, ah, intimacy. That was the second thing that came after this conversation. What was that, it? That uh, women would never admit that um, size is you know matter matter but deep down there size matter is because of their pressure that's the reason people are not conducting surveys so. are you serious so if you want you're very much concerned about the size you already know where to look at so start making those trips saving money ecuador <laughs> on cameroon go there 80 80 just go to top five no no but on a serious note size doesn't matter let's be let's be realistic right mm. i don't think that it is it is the usage mm. it is the ability to apply what you have right. that matters and satisfaction means so satisfaction to different women is also based on a lot of conditions right and i think when it comes to intimacy know yourself first as a woman when you know yourself well enough you're able to then you know maneuver anything that is presented to, to you, you. <laughs> be it cassava be it abado <laughs> Be it carrots, be it uh, cucumber, whatever is presented to you, you'll be able to maneuver it based on you n having full knowledge of your body. So I think intimacy doesn't really count. So Nigerian men don't feel bad that you came number 44. We, we commensurate with you. You understand? No, you, you can do better. Do. Maybe it's the so, kind of food you are eating. Just check your yeah. diet. Maybe just let's go and check Equator. You get why? Let's just go and do for research purpose. Let's go and see what they are eating, what the men are doing. Exactly. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We'll be all right. You'll on be that fine. note, <laughs> <laughs> let's discuss this oil theft issue. Stay with us, we'll be right back.